Hi, my name is Yona. I'm the after school leader at Field Teen Center and today I'm going to show you how to make an I Spy page full of lots of hidden objects and whimsical drawings. I started mine when I was a sophomore in high school and continued into college. I'm going to show you how I made some of the drawings, what I was thinking about when I made each one, and how you could go about making your own. We'll need something to draw on. Copy paper is fine. A pencil, an eraser, black ink pens of different sizes, and optionally, Sharpies. Just be aware that Sharpie will bleed through thinner paper like printer paper. Let's look at our first example. In Candyland, I see a balloon elephant, two cameras, a helmet, three UFOs, a keyhole, three sets of tiny footprints, and four pieces of popcorn. Try to find them all. If you want to try to search for them on your own, you should pause the video here, and next I'll show you where these items are hidden. Now it's your turn to draw. I'm going to show you how I draw an ice cream cone and you can draw along with me. I'll start by sketching two circles where I'll make my scoops. I'm not worried about getting the exact shapes yet, just marking where I would like things to go. Once I have the basic shapes in place, I can start to add detail and get the exact shape a little bit closer. I'm paying attention to where the ice cream scoops are squishing each other, where they might drip, and I'm just moving very fast and loose because I should be able to erase anything that I don't want to keep. I'm sketching here with a blue pencil so it's easy to see on screen, but you should be using a pencil that can erase, and you should be moving as lightly as possible while still being able to see your own drawing. Notice how these lines will curve around the shape of the cone. Once I like the way my sketch looks, I'll start to outline it with a black pen. And I'll start with all of the things that are on top, like the cherry and the sprinkles. This just makes it easier to avoid accidentally overlapping lines where you don't want to, and keeping the drawing looking neat. Pay attention to where I use overlapping to make the top scoop look like it's sitting on top of the bottom scoop. Remember to take your time during this step so you don't make any mistakes. I've sped up the video, so don't worry about keeping up with me. I'm adding depth by leaving a space around all these little squares in the cone. Then at the end, we'll erase any lines we don't need. Next up at the tea party, I see three apple cores, three spilled teacups, someone taking a nap, a heart-shaped slice of cake, two birds, five top hats, and two acorns. If you want to try to find these things yourself, pause the video, and then I'll show you where they are. This next drawing should be a piece of cake after the first one. Again, I'm starting not by trying to sketch the exact shapes, but just big blocks to help me place all of the objects and make sure that my slice of cake is the size that I want compared to the plate, etc, etc. From this angle, the top of the slice of cake will be a very skinny triangle, and the side will be a rectangle. Once I have the basic shapes in place, I can start to add detail. My slice of cake is going to have a strawberry and some icing and a filling. Look for places to overlap, to add depth, and to make it interesting. Have fun with it! Once again, I'm going to start outlining with the objects that are closest to the viewer or on top of other objects. So that means I'm starting with the strawberry and my drippy icing. I'm going to create a texture using pointillism, just little tiny dots, to make the 
sponge cake look different from the icing. Don't forget the bottom edge of the plate and some crumbs. Next, in the bayou, I see two tongue-tied frogs, four mammals, a frog hiding underwater, three pairs of sunglasses, six dragonflies, four turtles, and ten toadstools. If you want to try to find these hidden objects, pause the video now, and then I'll show you where they are. This time, we'll draw a frog. We're going to imitate the style I used in this drawing, but the more you draw, the more you'll find your own style. Think about where you want each of the arms and legs to go. Is your frog happy, angry? That should affect the posture and where you place the arms. This time, one eye is going to be the closest to the viewer, so I'll outline that first. The other eye is partly hidden behind the curve of the head, so I'll do that after to create a little bit of depth. I'll start thinking about details like spots and warts and maybe a fly that this frog has caught on his tongue and even little fingers. Again, pay attention to overlapping. Which parts need to be closer, which parts need to look further away. And then of course we have to add a toadstool. Next, at the chili pepper eating contest, I see a belt, a satellite dish, three eggs, four bones, three lost quail babies, Pac-Man, and a love letter. If you want to try to find them yourself, pause the video, and then I'll show you where they are. Now we'll draw a rabbit. Just like before, we'll start by drawing the broad, basic shapes before we add details like the eyes and the nose. Imagine if you got your eye exactly perfect and then had to move it because you messed up the shape of the head. My rabbit is turned slightly to one side, so I used a guideline that I'll erase later to help me place the eyes correctly. The eye that's further away will touch the side of the face, and the closer eye will be in the middle. This rabbit will be holding a hand of cards, so I sketched the outline first, and then I added the shape of the individual cards, which kind of stick up in different places instead of being one solid block. As I'm sketching the arms, you'll see I have a bunch of different ovals because I might change the position slightly, and I'll clean all that up as I start outlining. I might also add details like fur, the inside of the ear, and when I'm sketching, I don't need to worry about those details. Don't forget, you can add any details you want. Maybe there's a pattern on the back of the cards. Maybe your rabbit has earrings or a hat. Anything you like. Your rabbit does not have to look like mine. It's okay if your final drawing is a slightly different shape from your initial sketch. As I was drawing, I realized my rabbit foot should be a little wider at the toes, so I changed it while I was outlining. I'll draw the eyebrows angled down so this rabbit looks like he's concentrating. And last but not least, I'll add a little cactus behind him just to create a sense of where he is and a little interest and detail. Don't forget those cactus spines. There might be dirt underneath. There might be clouds overhead. This cactus might have little ridges in it. The more detail you add, often the better and more realistic your drawing will look. Now that we've seen some examples and practiced drawing some objects and animals, we'll start a new I Spy page. I like to start by thinking about a theme or a place where I might put a bunch of different kinds of objects or creatures. 
My theme this time will be a library coming to life. So I'll have fairy tale creatures and books with things coming out of the pages. And because I already have lots of ideas, I'm just going to jump in and start drawing. But you might brainstorm a list or you might do a little test drawing like a little doodle before you start your final image so that if you make mistakes or come up with a new idea as you're drawing it's okay and you're not messing up something that you've worked on for a long time. I like to have a mix of tiny objects and large objects in a drawing to make it feel balanced. So I'm starting by creating some spaces where I can put smaller objects. I've got one large open book and behind I'm starting to sketch some stacked up books and one book leaning against the others. And now I can start to create objects coming off the pages. I'm starting with a beanstalk like Jack and the Beanstalk. I'm going to have it curving around so some parts will appear closer, some parts will appear further away. I'll have some leaves sticking up off of it so it's overlapping the book so that it looks like it's coming out of the pages and maybe the leaves will be overlapping in other places. We've got lots of depth happening. I'm marking with circles where I'll put some little flowers and I thought it might be fun if a flower is coming to life out of the book and using its leaves to hold a watering can. So I was getting ideas as I was drawing and because I'm just sketching and I can erase anything that's all fine. I can test an idea and I can always erase it if it doesn't work or if I need to move it to make it match up a little bit better. As I continue to sketch, I'll want to think about adding depth and dimension to this book so that it looks like it takes up actual space and isn't just a weird flat fold of paper. So I'll want to add the spine and other pages. And over on the other side, where there are fewer pages, you can see I have two little circles and those will be a pair of eyes sticking out from underneath the bottom page there. Each of these stacked books will also need to have pages inside so that they look like they take up space and they're real books. And underneath here, I've got space to add another tiny object, maybe Cinderella's glass slipper. As I'm drawing, because the point will be to hide objects, I want to think about what surprises I might add or where I have space to put something secret and hidden or maybe even double meanings. Maybe people have to find multiple kinds of footwear. So here's the first shoe and I'll think about whether I want to put some more in. On top of these books, I'll draw the three little pigs. And just like before, I'm going to start with simple shapes, just a bunch of circles to mark where the head will go, where the legs will go, and then I'll start to add detail. And I'll add in the sketch of the second pig before I add detail on the first. The last pig will be climbing up the books because it's no fun if they're all just sitting there flat, but if they're moving and doing weird things, it's more interesting to look at. I also want to add something sticking out of the pages of this book, so I think it will be a dragon's tail. Now that I have a lot of details on my page, I've done a preliminary outline with a thin pen, and now I'm going over that outline that I've already done with this thicker pen to add more depth. Some objects that are heavier or closer to the front will have a darker outline around them to make them easier to see. And other objects, like these very thin pages or the tiny scales on the dragon, I will not outline thickly because the thinner the line around them, the more delicate and thin they will appear. 
You'll see here that I'm outlining this flower because it is on top of the page and outlining it even darker than before makes it pop forward so you can see more clearly that it's closer to the viewer than the page underneath. I definitely have room on my page to add even more objects and details and books and funny things coming out of them, so I would want to make sure to really finish my sketch and add all of those details before I start outlining. So at home, you'll want to think about what else you might add to this drawing. Feel free to get in touch with us either by email or on Instagram and let us know what you would add to this drawing or to show us your finished version of this drawing or your own completely different iSpy page. not have noticed before that there was a key hung around part of this beanstalk but now that I've outlined the outer part of it more darkly it sticks out and it's easier to see. Adding a thick outline is also a sneaky way to hide any errors that you might have made in your initial outlining with a thinner pen. You'll notice that in all of my finished examples, it's just the ink drawing, no color, black and white, because it's easier to hide objects if everything is the same color. But if you really like your drawing and you want to add color, you should go for it. So that's it. I hope this has given you some ideas. And if you decide to share your finished drawings with us, you can get in touch with us on Instagram or through email. And both of those are in our description box.